Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. And I'm going through some books on foraging plants and mushrooms that I've really found helpful. And uh, this is the Audubon uh, Society Field Guide to Mushrooms. This covers a huge amount of mushrooms. They have over uh, 750 color pictures of different mushrooms. And plus, uh, they have the information in the back. Uh, they give you a system wh where um, you can kind of key out what you're looking at. Uh, and the total page count, let's look at the total page count on this book, is 900 pages. And uh, now you've heard me talk before about if you're <coughs> interested in edible mushrooms, I think you should get guides specific to your region if possible, or one that just covers edible mushrooms. Then you don't get confused as much. Uh, now some people say this is the only book they use, but I find that it's like almost too much information. And sometimes too, uh, like here's a uh, chanterelles, a mushroom I find in my area. Uh, with your your book specific about edible mushrooms, they'll go into more detail and they'll talk about what trees are associated with and uh, they'll pair right with it a lot of times, a look-alike, something that looks similar enough so that you can make mistake with it and that's really valuable. So I still want to recommend first that you get a regional guide or a guide that's specifically to do with edible mushrooms if that's what you're intending to do. Now if you just want to learn about mushrooms and the, all the different sorts and things this is excellent and you know mushrooms are used for other purposes too. They're used for dyeing. They one times they were used for dyeing cloth. Uh, also use certain uh, mushrooms uh, can uh, be turned into a felt like substance and they actually make hats hats out of mushrooms and uh, the fibers is material mushrooms which means you probably could make paper with them too I don't know and then uh, in more primitive times there were certain mushrooms that were sought after for their ability to catch a spark for the purpose of starting a fire or for carrying a fire you got to remember at one time uh, fire was extremely difficult to obtain. At one time man had to capture it in the wild and man figured out how to make it. Well usually most cultures that made it, uh, at least early in the culture, had enough trouble making it so that they tried not to let that fire go out and uh, if they had to go somewhere they would carry some of that fire with them. And w these uh, tinder funguses they're called were kind of excellent at that because they'd catch a spark and they'd smolder for a long period of time so you could actually carry that uh, dried uh, certain type of mushroom like the chaga or the horse hoof mushrooms uh, and you carry it with you to your next location and then you'd use that that little bit of fire that's in there with uh, other dry kindling and things and tinder and you would start your fire again. So just an interesting note on some other uses of mushrooms. But it's just a fascinating thing to learn about mushrooms. And what we've learned uh, more recently, and you know, I'm 65, so I'm putting this in, when I say recently, I'm talking about 20 years, is the incredible association that mushrooms have with other plants and what uh, benefit they provide to other things around them. Now there are certain mushrooms that uh, like northern tooth that grows on a specific tree and if you see that on it that tree is a goner because it's already been colonized by a mushroom. The mushroom's eating the tree from the inside out and the tree's going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. But other mushrooms that are not parasitic live in an association and there'll be this mat of mycelium under the ground that's invisible to you but it actually works in a relationship with a tree and it can transport like a wick nutrients that the tree area might the area where the tree is might not have and the the, the fungus takes some sugars from the tree so it's a symbiotic relationship 
and uh, they've done more and more studies where they've showed comparison planting with plants that were inoculated with the type of fungus that they normally would find in the soils and ones who aren't and a lot of times it, the difference is dramatic sometimes a plant will be a third or even 50 percent bigger and bushier that has the proper uh, 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 fungus organisms put back in the soil for it to grow in. And so now they have these uh, products that you can use for your garden, you can use for your lawn, you can use for planting trees. And what they do is help restore that, which normally by the time you buy dirt, you know, you seed your lawn and you do all these things, well, a lot of that stuff's gone. Well, you can put it back. So it's kind of neat. And uh, so the whole world of mushrooms is fascinating. And uh, a guide like this, I think it says it covers, well, there's 750 plates, so it, it certainly covers uh, 700. And what this has is a, see, here's the one sectional one mushroom from here to here. Gives you a brief, um, gives you the common name, the Latin name, description, season, habitat. Uh, this one's on dry, hard oak logs, habitat. Canada, Texas, West Oregon, Mexico, and comments. They'll have a comment section too with a few comments. So you get you get a condensed thing. That's why it's interesting to get your regional guides because they, they tend to focus on fewer mushrooms and you can learn more about them. And um, so this is just excellent. I'm gonna post a link below and if you order it, do my link. You're helping support my channel. So there you go. Mike Kennedy saying, I cannot wait to get walking out in the woods again. We've had, Today's like 59. <laughs> the snow is melting, but we're going to have another cold day. Maine is not done with winter yet. And this is March 1st. we got much more to go, I'm afraid. Bye.